This is Haris Abdurrahman from 4th Prof Morning. My roll number is BP1650082 and I'm from the group number 12. The topic assigned to my uh, group is fluid and electrolyte disorders and in this presentation I'll be talking about phosphorus. Phosphorus is uh, a chemical element denoted by the letter P having uh, uh, atomic mass number of 15 and it is the second most abundant chemical found or element found in the body. They have important roles in the cell structure, metabolism and regulation of subcellular processes, maintenance of acid-base homeostasis. Basically it is generally involved in maintaining the body uh, physiology. Okay. Now it comprises 1% of the total body weight and uh, it is majorly found in the bone teeth which where it is 85% and uh, the normal range in the, in the adult is 2.5 to 4.5 mg per TL while in the infants it, it is slightly higher due to their requirement because they are in the developing stage and they require more phosphorus for the bones and other parts to develop. Now moving on uh, Hypophosphatemia, uh, as the name indicates, uh, it is an electrolyte disorder in which the phosphorus levels are below the standard ranges. Now they can be divided into two types. Number one, moderate hypophosphatemia, which has a range of uh, one to 2.5 mg per DL and the severe hypophosphatemia in which the serum concentration drops down below one mg per DL. Now it is commonly caused by uh, deficiency in the diet uh, but generally it is not the case. Uh, there are other factors which may lead to this complication uh, such as impaired renal absorption from the from the intestine or uh, a dysfunction of the kidneys can lead to uh, this abnormality and uh, other factors like taking antacids or taking uh, hyper uh, performing hyperalimentation which is taking sub other supplements uh, intravenously and not orally, uh, this can also lead to uh, problems such as hypophosphatemia. Now, what are the signs? The signs are majorly divided into two types: the acute and chronic. Uh, so they are listed in this in this slide, which are generalized main muscle weakness for the acute and uh, severe uh, for the chronic. There are severe uh, complications such as sensitivity to the decreased sensitivity to the insulin dysfunction of the uh, white blood cells or BCs and other. Now how we assess uh, hypophosphatemia, there are generally two criteria. The serum concentration levels can be checked or the urinary, urinary phosphorus excretion rate can be checked. So these are two criteria to determine whether a person is suffering from this disease or not. What are the treatments of treat, treatment options? The treatment options are divided into uh, two types, ma majorly basically depending on the state of the patient. If he's uh, conscious, then we will give him uh, the oral, supplement, oral supplementation. And if, we, if he, is, he or she is uh, unconscious, we will uh, refer to the parental route. So the infusion over uh, over 30 to two, uh, 30 minutes to 2 hours can be given or for source that can be orally administered is the ranges are given below okay so here we have a case study of a 72 year old woman named Emma and it is found that the major complications with this woman is CHF, chronic heart failure, the hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and she also has peptic ulcers. She is taking some medications for them as well. Now, the problem she has, uh, the problem that she has is she has a low serum phosphorus level, and uh, her respiratory uh, condition is not very well. So, we will dissect this case study in the latter, in the coming slides, and Look for answers. Now the first part of the SOAP note that is the subject. So here it is uh, stated that she has from for the past one week she has uh, increased malaise, confusion, decreased activity and she also has a history of these um, major complications that I just uh, told you about in the previous slide. She is taking some uh, medications like hydrochlorothiazide, these are thiazide diuretics. She is taking sucralfate and of course insulin for her diabetes. 
and uh, her condition is still not uh, in a good state she is suffering from respiratory distress and her condition continues to deteriorate so much so that she is on mechanical ventilation now these in the objective part we will uh, state the numeric that we obtained from certain tests and these are stated below basically her partial oxygen concentration her partial carbohydrate uh, carbon dioxide concentration they are all below the normal ranges now these ranges which are in the bracket are the normal ranges for a normal adult so as you can compare them with these stated ranges and see that uh, she has considerably low amount of these pressure the oxygen the carbon dioxide while in the case of electrolytes uh, they are also fluctuating they are not normal sodium potassium chloride 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 are basically in the normal ranges but the glucose here look at the glucose it is it is it is very high now she is in a hypoglycemic glycemic state i believe because the normal range is 60 to 110 but here she has uh, 320 mg per kg so which is not normal so same as the case of phosphorus it is very low very so we have to find out the causes why she is suffering from such conditions now the assessment made is that the use of aluminum and magnesium containing antacids has led to the decrease in absorption which is why she has suffering from hypophosphatemia which is quite understandable that understandable because i told you in the previous slides that antacids containing aluminum and magnesium can bind to phosphorus and which can lead to the uh, decreased absorption in the intestine which is which can be a factor in causing this hypophosphatemia she is also taking sucralfate and which has the same mechanism of action uh, it can bind to phosphorus and can lead to the lower absorption of phosphorus now in hyperglycemia this woman is taking thiazide diuretics and thiazide diuretics can lead to increased diuresis now more you the more you urinate the more vital ions and minerals you lose so the uh, this can be also be a factor in the loss of phosphorus her condition her renal function is altered because it is manifested by the uh, jumping and lowering levels of the electrolytes in her body so uh, now what what sort of plan do we advise or what do we suggest her to take let's look in the we we'll look at it in the next slide now the plan is basically she is not conscious she is in the state that she is vomiting and she has intermittent diarrhea so all supplementation would never be advised to such a person uh, so instead we will look for the parenteral administration now in the parenteral administration potassium phosphate 15 m mole uh, will be infused with 250 ml of 0.45% saline over 12 hours Now this regimen will be repeated once until the serum phosphorus level eventually uh, recovers back to the normal range. Then we will switch her to the oral supplementation with fleet phosphosoda. Then, okay, so this will be given at one teaspoon twice daily to her through enteral tube feeding. Okay, this will be the plan for this uh, lady. So. hope you like it uh, this was all for the presentation uh, goodbye